If you're like most professionals, you've spent hours in meetings that go nowhere. I get it. After nearly a decade in consulting and planning, leading and participating in hundreds, maybe thousands of meetings, I know how frustrating it can be to watch valuable time slip away. So in this video, I'm sharing the exact strategies I have learned over the years to cut out wasted time, run efficient meetings and leave each one feeling productive instead of drained. So one of the biggest time drains in my own experience is getting pulled into meetings that don't really need me there. Early in my career, I accepted almost every invite, thinking it was essential to stay in the loop on every project. But soon I realized I was wrecking my focus and pushing my real work into late nights. I'd sit through hours of discussions, often wondering why am I even here? And in the worst cases, I'd leave without adding any value, just another to-do piled onto my list. By the end of the day, I'd barely made a dent in my own tasks. And honestly, I still see this all the time, even with people who aren't new to the job. They sit in meetings because they don't dare to say no, or because they think because being busy means being productive and valuable. But that's a big misconception. Sitting in meetings you don't need to be in doesn't make you more productive. It just fills up your day with less time for the work that truly matters. That's why it's so important to start saying no to unnecessary meetings. And don't worry, people won't hate you for it. If there's something important that needs your input, they'll always reach out again. That's why you should only accept those meetings where your presence is truly essential and you'll free up hours each week to focus on the work that drives results. So here's my action tip. Before hitting accept on a meeting invite, ask yourself, is my role critical here or could I just catch up afterward with a quick summary? If it's a letter, politely decline or ask for a follow-up. You'll be surprised how much more productive and in control of your time you'll feel. Once you start being a bit stricter with yourself and others about meeting invitations, you will quickly spot the next big time waster. So picture this, you're setting up a meeting for an important project and it feels natural to invite everyone connected to it. After all, having more minds in the room should lead to better decisions, right? And also, you would not want to miss out on an important point of view or stakeholder who could block your project. But before you know it, your invite list has grown and hopefully before the meeting, but sometimes only during it, you realize you have a room full of people with overlapping expertise and knowledge. This often leads to redundancy and drags the meeting down. I see this all the time, even among experienced teams. People feel they need to be in the loop, so they attend just to listen or show their face. But when everyone in the room already knows the same things, it doesn't add value, it just adds to the noise. And often each person feels compelled to contribute, even if it doesn't push the project forward. So here's the solution. Make sure each person in a meeting brings a unique set of skills and insight. This way, discussions are more focused, decisions come faster, and you're respecting everyone's time. And that's how you can ensure to not fall for this meeting mistake. When planning or reviewing your meeting invites, ask yourself, does this person bring something specific and unique to the discussion? If not, consider asking some people to sit this one out and catch up with the summary later. You'll notice your meetings become more efficient with a lot less overlap and more meaningful contributions. Once you've trimmed down your meeting list to the essentials, there's another step that makes a huge difference. Setting up a clear agenda and purpose, which is easier said than done. Too often, meetings get scheduled with vague goals like project update or team discussion. Without a clear agenda, these meetings quickly drift off course, wasting time and leaving everyone unsure of what was actually accomplished. So let me give you an example. I remember a project meeting a while back where the invite simply said team alignment. The meeting started with good intentions, but without a structured agenda, the discussion bounced from one idea to another. Before we knew it, half the time had passed and we hadn't even covered the critical updates. People started bringing up unrelated issues and everyone f left feeling unclear about what we'd actually achieved. We ended up scheduling a follow-up meeting 
just to finish what we'd originally set out to do. And this is why setting a specific agenda and purpose is so important. And here's the key. That agenda isn't just for show. Use it to actively guide the meeting. If off-topic points come up, don't let them derail the discussion. Instead, park them in a designated area on your notes to revisit later or address separately. This keeps the meeting focused and ensures you're making real progress. So here's my action tip. Before sending out a meeting invite, take five minutes to set a clear agenda and define the purpose, whether it's for brainstorming, decision-making or status updates. I find it helps to share this agenda in OneNote or Outlook ahead of time so everyone knows exactly what to expect and how to prepare. And during the meeting, use it to keep everyone on track and park unrelated topics. With this approach, your meetings become more focused and productive and you'll leave with a clear sense of what's been accomplished. Now, if you found these practical but powerful tips helpful so far and want even more beyond this video, sign up for my newsletter via the link in the description and start making real lasting progress today. With a focus agenda and clear purpose in place, the next step to running a truly productive meeting is preparing in advance. It's a step that seems obvious, but is often overlooked. And when people show up unprepared, the entire meeting can feel like it's just scratching the surface. Preparing for a meeting, however, is simpler than you might think, but can be a real game changer. I'll give you an example. Not too long ago, I'd organized a meeting with a well-defined agenda and purpose, but about five minutes in, it became clear that half the team hadn't reviewed the materials I'd sent. Instead of jumping right into meaningful discussions, we spent the first 15 minutes catching everyone up. By the time we actually got to the main points, time was running out and we ended up with more questions than answers and of course another follow-up meeting to get things back on track. It was frustrating and felt like we'd accomplished very little. This is why preparing for a meeting makes such a difference. When everyone reviews the relevant materials in advance, it allows us to get straight to the heart of the discussion. You save time, boost the quality of conversation and leave with clear actions rather than lingering questions. So here's my action tip. Make it a habit to review any necessary documents or information beforehand and jot down a few key points or questions to bring up during the meeting. If you're the organizer, make it easy for others by sharing these material along with the agenda well ahead of time. And to make sure everyone comes prepared, consider sending a quick reminder one or two days before the meeting. Personally, I like to keep everything accessible and organized in OneNote, Outlook or on the Teams SharePoint, which makes preparation straightforward. With this small step, you'll notice your meetings running more smoothly and effectively with a real sense of progress by the end. You might think you're all set up once you've prepared your attendees and set up the invite, but there's actually one more thing you can do before the meeting even begins to make it even more efficient. And it's a super simple trick that makes your meetings instantly more productive without adding anything extra. Make them shorter. It might sound surprising, but here's why it works so well. When you set a shorter time frame, you can create a sense of urgency that keeps everyone focused on the topic. I remember a project meeting I'd scheduled for the usual hour, thinking we'd need the full time to cover everything. But we spent the first 20 minutes on small talk and side discussions. And by the time we got to the main points, we were rushing. So decisions were left hanging and we ended up scheduling again another meeting just to finish up. Sounds familiar? And that's where Parkinson's law comes in. It says that tasks expand to fill the time we give them. So by setting shorter meetings like 30 or even just 15 minutes, you create the perfect amount of pressure to keep discussions sharp and focused. There's no room for off-topic chats, so only the essential points get covered. My action tip for you. Next time you schedule a meeting, try cutting the usual time in half. Instead of an hour, go for 30 minutes. Or if it's a quick check-in, keep it to 15 minutes. Let everyone know the meeting will be brief and to the point. I also recommend changing the default meeting length in Outlook. Switch the 60-minute default to 50 minutes or 30 to 20. This subtle shift not only saves time, but also builds in a buffer between meetings for people to wrap up or prepare for their next task. I actually like to use a timer during meetings to help keep us on track and signal when we're almost out of time. 
and you'll be surprised at how quickly decisions can be made and how much more time you get back by keeping meetings short and effective. All right, so you've got a focused agenda, a prepared team and a shortened meeting time to keep things sharp. But there's another thing that makes all the difference. Without this step, which I'm going to reveal in a second, even the most productive meetings can feel like it's gone nowhere because at the end of the day, ideas and discussions don't mean much if they are not turned into actionable steps. The key to making every meeting count is to end with clear action items and follow-ups. I can't tell you how many meetings I've left in the past where everyone seemed to be on the same page, but because we didn't define next steps, things fell through the cracks. People left with different interpretations and key actions were either delayed or missed altogether. This led to another round of meetings just to pick up where we thought we'd left off. A frustrating cycle that wastes time and momentum. That's why wrapping up each meeting with clear action items and designated follow-ups is so essential. When every attendee leaves knowing exactly what they need to do and by when, it keeps projects moving forward smoothly and avoids any confusion. So here's my action tip for you. As the meeting wraps up, take a few minutes to review the main action point. Assign each task to a specific person with a clear deadline and confirm that everyone is aligned. If you're using a tool like OneNote or Microsoft To Do, jot down the tasks right then and there and send out a quick summary afterwards as a follow-up. This step ensures nothing is forgotten and that everyone is accountable for their part. You'll see a huge difference in how much progress you make when everyone leaves a meeting knowing exactly what to do. Now you might think you have the perfect setup for future meetings, but let me tell you, the ultimate tip to avoid wasting time in meetings is still missing. Sometimes the best way to make a meeting more productive is to avoid having it all together. Not every discussion needs a formal meeting. Often an email, chat message or shared document can cover the essentials just as effectively without disrupting everyone's workflow. I've seen this save countless hours. In the past, I'd often jump into meetings just to clarify a few updates or ask simple questions, only to realize afterward that an email could have done the job in a fraction of the time. Meetings should be reserved for topics that really benefit from a live interactions like brainstorming or decision making. So that's my action tip. Before you even schedule or attend a meeting, ask yourself, could this information be shared or discussed effectively over email or in a chat? If the answer is yes, skip the meeting and choose a simpler method. Tools like Microsoft Teams, Outlook or shared project documents can keep everyone in the loop and on tasks without the need to gather everyone in one room. Now let's take your meeting management skills to the next level and dive deeper into mastering time management as a whole. Building the right habits step by step is key, but knowing where to start can be tricky, especially when progressing from the basics to advanced techniques. So watch this video next, where I'll guide you through each stage to go from beginner to pro in time management.